continue raising this roof with praise to God. We all know this one so very well. Let us sing together how great thou art.
taken from the prophet Isaiah, a very well-known passage, particularly the end, with this wonderful word of comfort, this wonderful word of promise and strength, uh, that we too shall rise up like eagles as we wait upon the Lord. Isaiah chapter 40. Have you not known? Have you not heard? Has it not been told to you from the beginning? Have you not understood from the foundations of the earth? It is he who sits above the circle of the earth, and its inhabitants are like grasshoppers, who stretches out the heavens like a curtain, and spreads them like a tent to live in, who brings princes to naught, and makes the rulers of the earth as nothing. Scarcely are they planted, scarcely sown, scarcely has their stem taken root in the earth, when he blows upon them, and they wither. The tempest carries them off like stubble. To whom, then, will you compare me? Or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. He who brings out their host and numbers them, calling them all by name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power. Not even one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord? and my right is disregarded from my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable, but he gives power to the faint, strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted, but those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. For our epistle lesson, we turn to Paul's first letter to the church in Corinth, the ninth chapter, beginning in verse 16. Paul writes, If I proclaim the gospel, this gives me no ground for boasting. For an obligation is laid on me, and woe to me if I do not proclaim the gospel. For if I do this of my own will, I have a reward. But if not of my own will, I am entrusted with a commission. What then is my reward? This is my reward, that in my proclamation I may make the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my rights in the gospel. For though I am free with respect to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so that I might win more of them. To the Jews I became as a Jew, in order to win the Jews. To those under the law I became as one under the law, though I myself am not under the law, so that I might win those under the law. To those outside the law I became as one outside the law, though I am not free from God's law, but I am under Christ's law so that I might win those outside the law. To the weak I became weak, so that I might win the weak, and I have become all things to all people, so that I might by all means save some. And I do it all for the sake of the gospel, so that I might share in its blessings. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will continue to give attention to God's word and there's some beautiful hymnody that we have begun with. I think you know those, those songs, those hymns that we started with, our, our wonderful triumphant hymns of praise. Uh, this song also invites us uh, to praise the Lord, who is unsearchable and unknowable, and yet who invites us into his presence, uh, that we might see him in creation and we might entrust ourselves over to him. So give God praise as we join together in Psalm 147. Let us lift our hearts and our voices. Praise the Lord. How good it is to sing praises to our God, for he is gracious, and a song of praise is fitting. The Lord builds up Jerusalem, he gathers the outcasts of Israel, he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds, he determines the number of stars, he gives to all of them their names. Great is the Lord and abundant in power, his understanding is beyond measure. He lifts up the downtrodden, he casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make melody to our God of the lyre. He covers the heavens with clouds, prepares rain for the earth, makes grass grow on the hills. He gives to the animals their food, and to the young ravens when they cry. His delight is not in the strength of the horse, 
nor his pleasure in the speed of a runner. But the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him, in those who hope in his steadfast love. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. This time, anybody who wants to come and join me out here at the front, I'm going to invite you to come on down. <coughs>
And the rest of you, uh, you got nothing for you other than to invite you to rise and let's proclaim God's praise as we join in our gospel acclamation. <coughs> Sunday. Her father, the preacher, 
was really ramped up. And boy, he was preaching. He was just going. And he preached 15, 20, 30 minutes. Just kind of kept going. He lost track of time. And, and, and whether people were watching time or not, I don't know. But uh, you know how preachers will sometimes get to go on. And he went so long that it hit noon. And he was in the middle of preaching when all of a sudden that sermon, or that sermon, that siren went off blasting. And his daughter in the front row jumped up and yelled. What did she yell? Go home and get your lunch. And like a whole bunch of obedient sheep, the whole congregation got up. Went home and had their lunch. Well, I'll try to watch the time, and uh, if I hit noon, I invite one of you to stand up and invite the congregation to go home and get your lunch. But don't do that yet. Spend a little time here. Let's let's uh, let's be at peace with one another. Let's relax here a little bit. Uh, life is busy, right? Uh, this is a place where we can find rest for our spirits. This is a place where we are invited to just come and be in the presence of God and, and leave the busyness behind. You know who was really busy? Jesus. If you read your Bible, if you read through the Gospels, Jesus is kind of go, go, go. We're, we're still in the first chapter of Mark as we're reading through uh, Mark's Gospel this year. And Jesus has just barely started his, his ministry on earth. And, and people are coming from all over the place. It's constant. He's just, you know, everybody, he's in great demand. And in the middle of all this busyness, he doesn't strike a committee to say, okay, I want you to vet different people and I'll meet the demoniacs on a certain time and those who need a healing of the, of the mind and those who need a healing of the body. Jesus doesn't do any of that kind of stuff. He greets people where they are. But he also says, I need to go and pray. I need to go and be in the presence of the Father. I need to maintain that communion. No matter how busy life is, I need to ensure that I take time to pray. So that is my encouragement today. That is what I took away from our gospel today is how essential prayer is to our life. How critical it is to remaining in communion with God the Father. If we start to let prayer slip, our faith begins to slip. And life begins to become pretty overwhelming. So I'm going to try and give you three images uh, that I can try to leave with you today. Hopefully they'll stick in your mind a little bit of that uh, encouragement and exhortation to prayer. Three things. Prayer, power for life. Prayer is power for life. Prayer is the seatbelt for life. That one might stick with you. And prayer is the breath of life. So I'll try and keep those three before you. Power for life, the seatbelt for life, and the breath of life. So it's power for life. I, I think we can probably recognize that. Scripture is filled with times speaking of the power of God and how to, to uh, and, and, you know, come into that presence of God who has power for our lives. Uh, and, and it made me think about a time when I was back in high school. Now, I was a bit of a nerd. I know that's hard to believe because I'm just so incredibly cool. But uh, I, I'm right to laugh, right? I guess. But uh, back in, in I, this is dangerous to tell stories, isn't it? But back in, in, in high school, I was in the ham radio club in Swift Current. Uh, and the ham radio club, let me tell you, there weren't any girls in the ham radio club. This is kind of where the nerds hung out. Uh, and it was in this back corner of the electronics lab. And, and Swift Current Comp had a really big electronics lab. And it was run by the guy who was the electronics uh, teacher, I guess you'd call him. And we'd go there and we'd go on the ham radio and we'd try to talk to people all, all over the world. We thought this was a lot of fun. Uh, but I remember a story our electronics teacher told us how back in the war, he was, uh, he was in charge of, of fixing teletypes. You guys know what a teletype is? This is kind of really why I know some of you young guys are going, teletype, what are you talking about? This is really old, I didn't know either until I joined, joined the Ham Radio Club. And you'll find out. It's this really old piece of machinery that, that I don't even know exactly how it works, but it, it, it receives radio waves or else it's connected to like a telegraph and it types out little messages. It's kind of always going, did, 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 and it's, it's typing out quick little snippets. And in the war, obviously, this was very critical as people would be sending messages back and forth about troop movements and all kinds of things. And so when the teletypes broke down, it was very critical to get them back up and running quickly. Uh, and he had a team, and he was, he was young, and he was fresh uh, into electronics, and he thought he kind of knew everything, and he got his team together, and his teletype had broken it down, uh, and so they took, it, took the teletype completely down, and they, they did everything they thought to fix it, and they put it all back together, still didn't work. Well, all right, we've got a problem solved, we've got to get it back. To, they tore the whole thing down again, and all the little pieces, all the little tubes and transistors and everything, checking everything, replacing a few here, and there, they put it all back together again, nothing. Figured, what is going on here? This is this is such a challenge. They did it a third time. Took the whole thing down, put it all back together, and was sitting there staring at this stupid thing that isn't working. And a secretary walked into the room and said, You know what, guys? You don't have to plug in. Prayer plugs us in. 
When we are plugged into God, when we are giving ourselves over to God in prayer, we are plugged into God's enormous power that can strengthen us, guide us, encourage us through whatever might come our way. Stay plugged in each and every day. Ensure that you're coming to God to receive bits and pieces of His power to take you through that day. So it's power for life. Absolutely, it's critical to maintain that communion with God through prayer. Now this one's a little tricky. Seatbelt for life. I don't know. Uh, this was kind of an interesting image, and it came out of a little story that I read uh, online about a pastor who was shaking hands with a woman at the back of the church, and she was just for very quickly she was telling the preacher, my, "My week has been just crazy, frenetic, constant, go go go, and I don't feel like I, I've ever really got a chance to get my feet under me. I've been just going all week long, and, and you know how I really knew it was getting too much." I walked into church this morning, I went to my usual pew, I sat down, and I tried to belt myself in. Reach for the seatbelt. Yeah, that's kind of funny, but you know what? That's not a, not a bad image, right? Life gets bumpy. The road of life is filled with all kinds of twists and turns, and, and you know, sometimes we put our life on cruise control, and our faith on cruise control, and we think, God, I can just kind of go, no big deal. And, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, a gigantic pothole comes along, an axle-breaking pothole that just snaps things for us, or a big nail that punctures our tire. We're sitting there on the side of the road as life just kind of keeps whizzing by, and we're feeling like, now what do I do? Uh, right? Well, call out. Call out to God, certainly, if those times come upon you. Because it can be worse than that, right? Some of you know that. You've been through that. Where all of a sudden you're in a head-on collision. You need more than a seatbelt. You need an airbag and maybe side impact airbags to preserve yourself, to keep you safe, to keep you through that collision. If that's not what's happening in your life right now, give thanks. But don't just go on cruise control. Continue to belt yourself in with God. Continue to come to Him in prayer. Continue to say, Lord, bless my life. Show me new things. Help me to get out on some of those side roads where I'll experience more of your life, but I may discover somebody who's beside the road and I can be of assistance. And I can pray with them and encourage them and help them along the way. Get belted in. And if you want to see a wonderful image, a wonderful example of that, I'm going to put out a little plug for our Burundi fundraiser here. This coming Saturday, uh, people are going to come to the, to the hall and we're going to watch a movie called Because of Wind Dixie. I know some of you have already seen this, maybe read the book, but it's a really cute, really family-friendly, wonderful little movie. So if you can, come, because it's about a little girl named Opal. She's the daughter of a preacher, and they move to a new town, and she's lonely. She wants friends. She, she, she offers up a prayer to God, in fact, says, God, it's me. I'd like some friends. And, and it's kind of a funny, cute little movie. She looks around her church, and she's kind of like, oh, do I want to be friends with any of these people? Don't look around too much, brothers and sisters, but uh, I'm just kidding. Of course, we should be friends with one another. And I'm not going to spoil the movie for you, so you do have to come and see how, how prayer is a part of our life and how community begins to shape and form around faith uh, and how faith is buoyed uh, and strengthened in prayer. And, and, and it's, a, it's a lovely, wonderful little movie as, as Opal belts herself in to God's conveyance, to God's vehicle of, of grace and strength. So belt yourself in. Seat belt of life. And the breath of life. Uh, any of our confirmation students here? Oh, I don't know if I dare quiz you, Nadine. Um, I won't put her on the spot. Uh, she may not remember this, and many of you may not remember her, uh, but in, in Hebrew, now, how many of you are going to remember Hebrew, but in both Hebrew and Greek, the word for spirit is the exact same word for breath. breath. Ruach. It even sounds like you're breathing. Noima. Sounds like you're breathing out. It is the very essence of life. So I'm going to do something a little weird with you. I always do something weird with you, don't I? If I don't, I should. But I'm going to invite you to close your eyes. That's a, I know that's a dangerous thing to do in the middle of a sermon. But I do invite you to close your eyes. That is a good position of prayer to begin with, to have your eyes closed. And I'm going to invite you to breathe. Inhale. Exhale. Slowly, not too fast. Continue doing that. And I'm going to list the fruits of the Spirit. Maybe these are fruits that you need to have grow in your life. Breathe them in as I speak them. As you exhale, exhale the barriers, the garbage, the stuff that steals away these fruits.
Love. Know that love is who God is. Love is what God has for you. Love is what is to characterize your life. Breathe in the love of God. Joy. What a beautiful word. Joy. A joy that nothing can steal. No hardship or trial or pain can take away the joy of the Lord. It may temper it for a time, but joy comes with the morning. Patience. How much we need this. How much we get caught up with frustration and, and our anger rises up with us because we are impatient. Seek and breathe in the patience that Christ had. Kindness. Who is there in your life who needs to experience kindness? Who has perhaps not heard a gentle word, a kind word? Who has not experienced that moment knowing someone cares? Generosity. Be generous in this life. Give yourself over to others. I know that requires commitment, time, energy. But God is generous, and His power is sufficient. Faithfulness. In all circumstances, model the way of Jesus Christ. Be faithful to Him, and He will show the way. And self-control. There are temptations in this world. Often they're very little. We think, it's no big deal. Uh, I can come overcome this in time, I can just give myself over to this. But they build upon one another. Learn to practice self-control in the face of all things. If you haven't fallen asleep, I invite you to open your eyes once again, and, and maybe next time any of those things, and I know that list hits you really quickly, and we don't spend a lot of time just focusing on that, because I don't want the noon hour whistle to blow on us, and you all jump up to go. Uh, but the next time one of those things encounters you and you find yourself feeling less than loving, not so joyful, not filled with peace, stop and breathe. Maybe it's going to take three or four or 20 or 30 deep breaths before the Spirit empowers you to enter into that situation in a new way. But I encourage you, breathe as you go forth from this place. And may God's power rest upon you. We need that power each and every day. You know, I read a, a neat little story about a, a power outage that happened in a big city. Uh, and after it was all done, there were news reports that there were people stranded for hours on escalators. Mm. Escalators, maybe. They complained to the city. No power. What are we going to do, right? Well, we have the power to rise or to descend as needed when we walk closely with the Lord. He will lift us up on wings like eagles. That is a promise that is most certainly true. I hope you've experienced that in your life. If you need it right now, I encourage you, go to your knees, pray. We're going to pray later uh, in the service and come honestly before God with an open heart, with all those cares and concerns, with all those joys and blessings, and know that God holds them all and that God takes them and works in and through them. Let us be people of prayer and people of power. May God make it so. Amen. Well, I invite you to rise. Not up that escalator, but onto your feet at this time as you are able, and let us come before God with praise and thanksgiving, rejoicing in His presence, and seeking to be lifted up like eagles as we join in our hymn of the day, You Who Dwell.
held securely upon the one who loves us, who knows us, who has made us, and who will guard us through this life, we are bold to live in faith. Therefore, let us be bold to confess that faith. We do so now, joining together in the ancient words of the Apostles' Creed. Let us join together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's take a moment and share that peace we have with each other.
give you the encouragement to breathe. Find that place of prayer where your mind can be still, where you can rest in the one who knows you and loves you, the one who invites you to come before him now. Let us pray. Gracious God, we come into this place sometimes hurried, sometimes bored. We come from all kinds of situations, Father, and uh, in this place you knit us together by your grace in this wonderful and mysterious, mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ, for this world. Remind us of that. Feed us and fill us with your Holy Spirit, that as we breathe, we may take your life into ourselves. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, you are great. You are beyond expression. We cannot find words that will even capture the slightest bit of who you are. And yet you come to us. You reveal yourself to us again and again. You have revealed yourself most deeply in your Son, Jesus Christ, who bore the cross on our behalf so that we might experience the new creation that we are becoming. You also speak in the world around us, in the wonders of the natural world. Open our eyes to that. In the amazing diversity of creatures, in the scale and variety of planets, suns, stars, and moons, things that uh, boggle our mind as we begin to see how big this universe is and yet how small and the tiny things, we see a glimpse of you and your wonder as well. Move us to that wonder, Lord, so that our faith may be strengthened by you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy One, the psalmist declares that you bring princes to naught. You make the rulers of the earth as nothing. Humble those who seek positions of leadership, Father. Help them to make good decisions. We pray for our nation, Lord, as it stands on a tipping point of a very significant uh, decision to be made. We pray for guidance and discernment and, and wisdom for those whom we have elected to guide us. And also for the nations of our world. Too often it is vengeance and hatred that guide people. Help us to turn away from that, for an eye for an eye never ends. Instead, let us see the way of your Son, who was willing to sacrifice so that love might be the ultimate power. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Everlasting God, you give strength to the powerless and power to the faint. You raise up on eagles' wings those who turn to you. Remind us of that power. And we claim that power and invite it and, and ask for it for the people and situations that we are going to lift before you. People who are struggling with life, body, mind, and spirit, doubt and fear, loneliness, anger. There are many things that steal away your presence from us, Lord. So buoy us by your spirit and may your spirit rest upon those who we now name, either silently in our hearts or aloud before you. For all those who find winter difficult to get out, that's uh, all right. That's most of us, but uh, there are those for whom it is a real difficulty, uh, who simply cannot get out of their houses very much. And so we pray your grace upon them. Drive away loneliness, drive away fear. Keep them safe in your care. We pray for our annual meeting, which is coming soon, Lord, for, for guidance and discernment for our congregation and decisions that we must make. Uh, show us the path and help us to follow it in ways that will will lift up your gospel in the world. I also pray for our neighbors to the north, Christ Anglican, as Pastor Jim Homer said, will soon be uh, resigning his call there. It's, it's a big transition point for them, and so help them also to, uh, to find someone who can come and shepherd that flock. And we thank you for the ways in which we can work together with them, and we pray that uh, that would continue to be fruitful. We look toward your eternal glory, Holy One. We raise our voices to you in prayer. Teach us that path each and every day, Sometimes even unspoken prayer, just resting in your presence, can give us what we need to face even just the next moment. Move, we pray, in our homes, in our lives, our solitudes, and our cities. Cast out anything that oppresses us or threatens us. Heal those who are weak and bring peace in our time, so that all creation might sing out in praise to you and proclaim the message of love and hope which has been spoken into this world through Jesus Christ, who is our Lord and our Savior, and who taught us to pray. 
our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <coughs> Brothers and sisters, please rise that you might receive the benediction of our Lord. And now, may the Lord bless us and keep us. May the Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. May the Lord look upon us with favor and give us peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I would once again invite the congregation to be seated, and at this time I ask if there are any announcements which need to be lifted up from our community. You have a new list, I think, in your bulletin. Some of those may be somewhat new to you. Uh, Lent is not far away, so please take note of the various locations that Lent and worship services will be held. Uh, and uh, you also see there who will be uh, proclaiming the word. Uh, that is a wonderful opportunity, I think, that we have to share with other Lutheran churches in the city. Uh, and to get to hear other preachers and to gather with other brothers and sisters in Christ. So please take note of those Wednesday nights throughout Lent when you can gather and worship. Thank you for your faithfulness this past year, for the ways in which you have been a steward of your resources to this congregation. Uh, you will find in your mailbox charitable receipts, uh, so, which are useful to you uh, for your tax purposes. So please go and check your mailbox and pick those up. Uh, we're not likely to mail them out to you, so please pick them up while you're here. And uh, you know what? There's lots of chances to come and eat. If you'd like to do that, it's right to do so, to break bread together. So this upcoming Saturday, uh, we will do dinner and the show if you are available. Valentine's Day, come on. Some of you people. That's not just for lovers, it's for everyone who loves God. Uh, so please come out if you can. Tickets are on sale. Talk to Amanda, uh, Amanda Jones, that is, and she will set you up with tickets. This is a fundraiser for the Burundi Appeal, uh, and so everything that is uh, paid out in tickets will go to that purpose. It's a wonderful opportunity to uh, to build some of that fund that we are building so that we can help out uh, people in a, in a village halfway across the world. And then come and have some pancakes a week later. Why not? Not even a week later, right? Three days. Shrove Tuesday, that comes quickly, so come out on that Tuesday evening if you can. Pancakes and sausages, uh, and a wonderful opportunity to prepare ourselves to move into the season of Lent as well. It's almost time to get up and go get your lunch. Pretty close. Well, God bless you today, and uh, thank you for gathering in worship. Uh, we do celebrate with those who will celebrate this coming week. I do not have any anniversaries, but those who have birthdays are Jamie Langridge and Brian Hartle. So let's wish them a happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday.
Our worship is concluded. Go in peace. Serve the Lord.